So, one of the things I've been really interested in is trying to integrate narrative practices into other pra like other practices of uh, psychiatry that can be helpful. And I mean, one of the ways I think about this is the way in which medicine is a resource. Like other resources people may have a relationship with, whether it's like yoga or mindfulness or, you know, other kinds of practices. And, um, and so, you know, I see, um, you know, medicine is a resource that has both biological and also, um, you know, narrative effects. So um, the, the questions that I'm really, you know, how I've tried to really integrate this is to really be curious about, um, you know, someone has an experience of using this resource in medicine mm. and what are they noticing about it? You know, what fits for them, what doesn't fit? Um, uh, you know, what do they like about it? What, you know, what do they not like about it? And also um, questions about like, has, have there been any aspects of them, of uh, their preferred ways of being that are more available to them with the use of this resource? And what is that like? And what does that, um, you know, speak to in terms of their uh, hopes for themselves. So to have, to really see sort of the biological effects of the medicine as the landscape of, of action that you can then story and look at how does that suit and people can draw conclusions about that. And um, the whole time, of course, emphasizing that um, the capacities that medicine might make available to them, more available, are, are their own um, skills and values. And um, the medicine isn't providing them with the opportunity mm -hmm. to, you know, be a loving partner or a good student, that the medicine, that those are their capacities that they're able to bring forward more fully, possibly, with this use of this resource, just like um, a paintbrush provides you some opportunities to paint that a finger doesn't, that you mm -hmm. can actually, you know, use that as a tool in some way. So, um, uh, and thinking about even yeah, issues of compliance as, you know, how well, how well is the, um, you know, psychiatric provider complying with the person's preferences in, in, in um, offering medication options uh, uh, that someone might decide to take up. In psychiatry is moving away from uh, an emphasis on neurotransmitters um, as that being too simplistic and the way that thinking is really going is how what medications are doing is helping facilitate uh, different kinds of connections and neural pathways in, in the brain, like the things you talk about, Maggie. Um, uh, you know, in in you know, s you know, storing, making these pathways more available to people. So, for example, someone who's under the influence of um, depression, it can be really hard to have have optimism. So, someone can can access that, but it's really difficult. And what a medicine does is make that that pathway more available. Mm -hmm. And there's been studies that show there's actual brain growth that they can actually measure in different regions mm -hmm. of the brain. Um, but at the same time, medicine is always only palliative. It helps mm -hmm. while you take mm -hmm. it, but it doesn't actually lead to permanent changes in the brain. The only thing that uh, really does that is psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fabulous.